Uh, today uh, in the workshop we are going to make a tool, a tool that used to be available commercially. It's called a heat press. Um, I guess it's around the, the early 80s this was available. Uh, thanks to Dave and uh, uh, Dave's wonderful world of fantastic stuff or I hope I remember the name correctly. Uh, I got the inspiration to make a build uh, this tool. The tool we are talking about is the heat, the neck heat press. Uh, it's a tool to straighten out crooked guitar necks. I have the perfect candidate for the testing in the end. You will see it later on. But uh, first, I'll get you through the build process. Uh, it's a pretty long one, so uh, bear with me, guys. We start with a bunch of things from the hardware store. Some uh, box uh, aluminum uh, beams, uh, flat bar aluminum. Uh, uh, straight out of the hardware store, there's some uh, tube clamps, uh, there's some heat uh, transfer paste, and this. This is one thing that really got me going and set me on this right track. And once again, thanks to Dave and his world of fantastic stuff. These are PTC heating elements or term thermistor heating elements. They run on 12, 12 volts. Uh, this one that I picked up. And if you feed them with 12 volts, they keep a constant temperature of 70 centigrades. Uh, so if you want more heat, you ramp up the voltage. And if you, this is how they look inside the, those aluminum cases. If you, you have a higher temperature, uh, sorry, voltage, you get a higher temperature and so on. So it's pretty easy to regulate the energy coming off the elements. First, uh, I make a rough uh, estimation of how many of these I can fit. Uh, I thought I had three, but mm, maybe four will fit. And the more, uh, the easier it is to have an even heat spread throughout the, the bar or the, the tool. Uh, they will be glued, not glued, they will be connected uh, to this flat stock aluminum uh, with a um, uh, the heat transfer paste and they will be glued with, with RTF high temperature silicone. So for the first thing is to cut uh, both the flat aluminum bar and the box, uh, aluminum box to fit, to length and to size when it comes to aluminum bar. What's the idea with the alumin aluminum bar? It is to uh, act as a heat sink, uh, transferring and spreading the heat from the heating elements uh, to the, uh, to the uh, guitar neck. And then on top of that I will uh, size a piece of wood uh, to get a bit of pressure. Uh, not pressure, uh, stability, sorry, in, in the, the tool. And the pipe clamps will go around the neck of the guitar and I would have to find a way to distribute the forces and so on, but uh, that's for, for later. So uh, cutting things up and uh, um, getting it to size. For uh, nice cuts you need a sharp uh, blade, so the, a new hacksaw blade, uh, just to mark the occasion. So the box and the uh, flat bar cut to, to, to length and then I have to, to cut a small slice of the flat bar uh, away to fit into the box. I did that in the band saw. Uh, most of you might not know that wood and uh, aluminum uh, can often be cut on the same tools and this blade is for both aluminum and, uh, and wood. That's a nice fit. 
and that's what we are after. So the first part is to assemble the inside of the beam or box or whatever we call the, the heater part. So as mentioned, four of the heating elements, uh, they are uh, thermal. Uh, I, uh, first of all, we, we I need to, to mark out everything so I know where to put it. Uh, when you are adding glue and stuff, or beginning to slide around, you are thankful for having a marked out the the layout uh, beforehand so the a heat heat transfer paste usually used for pc cpus and stuff like that but it works very good for this application too it's not a glue it, it just transfer the heat uh, so i will use the rtf silicone uh, to, to glue these elements in, in place. So that's the RTF silicone. It takes about 24 hours to cure, so uh, by the magic of editing, we will see the next step immediately. Uh, next step are to, to size the, the wooden filler to, to add stability to, to all this and to make sure that the heat sink uh, flat stock is, is pressed against the outside of the box. And I also size it so uh, the wooden filler so, so I can, can fit the, the leads, uh, the cables uh, on the side to get them more or less out of the out of the tool. Uh, I use a steel uh, bar to keep things extra flat while drying out the or curing the, the silicone uh, to make sure it's flat. It's soldering time. Soldering for you Americans. Uh, making sure everything is insulated with, with heat shrink tubes and so on. I don't want to have any. To, I don't want to have any issues at all uh, once this is assembled. So actually, on cue, assemble time. Uh, the heat transfer paste uh, on the heat sink. I smear it out a little bit uh, and uh, into the tube with it. It was a bit fiddly to get it in, but. It, Slid in, slide in, got it in, slide it in. Sounds like a white snake album or something. Perfect. That's it. Uh, and then just to, to seal everything up and, and keep it in place, uh, I use the RTB uh, silicone sealing the end, trying to get it as far as possible into the uh, tube. The aluminum tube and also making kind of a uh, heat uh, sorry uh, strain relief and just then adding the contacts this is an important thing when you have it sealed up you don't see what's hot and not over to the the clamping system uh, these are as mentioned uh, tube Clamp, sorry, uh, pipe clamps, and I need to find a way to, to spread the load uh, from the small uh, clamps. So I uh, use a trick I've learned from Adam Savage uh, for bending uh, small, uh, in this case, aluminum uh, pieces. And it's tricky, it's hard bending aluminum in an even way. But after a few uh, tries, I got it pretty close. And after that, just cutting everything to size.
So uh, the plan is to glue uh, these uh, aluminum pieces to the steel uh, clamps. And as uh, aluminum is pretty hard, uh, anodized aluminum is pretty hard to glue onto, uh, I just roughed up the surface with, with some, some, some paper, uh, abrasive paper. Uh, remember, always mix your epoxy really good. Uh, I mix fast epoxies for at least 30 seconds and slow setting epoxies at least a minute. So I put quite a bit of, of epoxy on there uh, just to act both as, as uh, adhesive behind the pieces of, but also a stabilizer building kind of a fillet of uh, the epoxy. This was a one hour epoxy, so I didn't have to wait uh, overnight for this to cure. And the clamp down part, this is steel, uh, so I have to have pull out the angle grinder to, to chop off the excess parts. And uh, angle grinders are the hell scary tools. Sparks fly. And, you know, rinse and repeat. Uh, when the glue has cured, the box has cured, I uh, will put on some, some uh, thick cork lining uh, before I, I put the cork on I uh, filed off and sanded off all possible uh, sharp corners And then the old measure twice, cut once. You can see how off I am in the marking, but I decided to just cut. And it worked out. And once again, as I, I'm making two of these clamps, it's rinse and repeat all over again. Looking good. Uh, next step is to actually test uh, the fit to a uh, genuine uh, guitar. So this is a test guitar. I use a wooden slat. Uh, I've been recommended that to spread the heat. And this is just a cut off piece of, of the box aluminum part, uh, same size, of course, and the, the clamp just to check out that the threaded, threaded parts are, are long enough. The clamp, the hold on clamp, and I'm, this will work. I will have to add a few washers. You can see I was almost prepared for that. But with, with a few um, washers on each side, it's a very good fit. So, this is the actual guitar. It's an old uh, Levine arch top. No uh, truss rod, so uh, the neck has actually bowed quite a bit over the years. Uh, it has with string tension on and off, so it's a very stable neck, even though it's bent. It has a 0 0.85 millimeter relief. Uh, it had old celluloid uh, fret markers, and celluloid are flammable, really flammable, so I had to remove them. Um, I had some wooden spacer made to the same size as the relief on the neck. Uh, the wooden slats 
of course the same as you saw just before and the heater uh, the clamps in place and uh, cranking up the heat uh, I played around a little bit with the with the voltage and the, the current um, so I got it up to 40 degree I have a temperature gauge there and the relief is down to 50 I repeated this one more time and I had a really good result so thanks for stopping by Thank you.